Okay, everybody, so I have the Tetra Pond submersible filter. Um, here's the filter box here. It just has a few plastic clips, easy to open. And then it has a plastic coarse filter and a little bit finer filter underneath and then just the plastic tray. So that'll be super easy to maintain. And then also in the box, there is a short piece of connector pipe to hook it to your pump. And then uh, there's an attachment that will hook into the box there and a couple attachments for different size pumps. Um, and then this is just the pump I had lying around. It's a submersible Eco 185, so it's 185 gallons per, gal uh, gallons per hour. Um, my pond's about 100 gallons. I'm probably gonna end up getting something bigger at some point, but this is something I just had lying around and I wanted to see if we can clear up my water a little bit. So with this Eco pump, this part just comes off here and you can pop this little piece out and then the Tetra pump actually came with this piece that will fit right into here. And so there is a little pre-pump filter inside of this on the Eco, but this box will pretty much replace that. So it's just gonna be kind of a plug and play. And then for right now, I'm just gonna have this cycling in the pond until I get my little water feature set up. So we'll see how it does clearing up the water. Okay. So here's the pump here with this connector from Tetra. And this will just slide on over that. And then I rinsed this off just because it kind of had kind of a chemical smell from the factory. And then I'll connect this piece. From the pump to that. And then I'm gonna just set this in the pond and plug it in and we'll see how it, how it works. Okay, we'll see how that works. So that's rated for up to 500 gallons, but I'm assuming that depends on what kind of pump you have. So I'll give an update this evening and then again tomorrow morning and see how quickly it clears up the water. So this is about 48 hours after I put the filter in. Um, it's hard to see with the glare, but it's noticeably clear. The water is noticeably clear. You can see my fish in there a little bit. Um, we'll go in there and see how it compares and I'll pull out the filter and see what's in it after 48 hours. Um, it's not perfectly clear, but definitely an improvement. And at 20 bucks, it seems like a pretty solid deal for this small of a pond. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out the filter here and see what's in it after it's been running for 48 hours. Not a ton in this coarser sponge. A little bit of stuff in there. A little bit more in the lower one, but still not not a ton. But 
in the base here, that stuff that has come out of the sponge is quite a bit of waste um, that probably ran out of the sponges when I picked it up. So overall, I'm satisfied with it. I don't know that it helped as much as some people claimed as far as the clarity, but at the price point, and this is a smaller pump um, than I probably will end up having with this, I think it's a pretty good deal and I'd say to go for it. Hey everybody, so real quick in summary about the Tetra Pond Submersible Filter. Uh, I think it does a good job as a pre-pump filter and probably keeps your pump from getting clogged. It probably does a good job at pulling out some of the larger debris. It didn't clear up my water as well as I would have liked or as well as some people have claimed. Um, but it did clear it up more than it looks like in the underwater footage as far as I can tell looking from the surface. It's easier to see my fish. And lastly, if you were looking for it to clear up your water better, I think that there's you could probably get a finer filter material or media to put in there with it that would probably help well. Um, I'm going to keep it running and see how it goes. But I think at the price point and just for the sake of protecting your pumps from getting clogged, it's probably worth it. So try it out.